Democracy That Delivers is brought to you by the Center for International Private Enterprise. Now to your host, Ken Jakes. Hi, everybody. This is Ken Jakes. I'm the host of Democracy That Delivers, our podcast at site. And I'm joined once again by my friend and colleague, uh, Ryan Muser. He's a program officer with the Africa team. And he's been a frequent co-host on this program. Good morning, Ryan. How are you? Hey, Ken. I'm doing all right. How about you? I'm doing great. I hope you're having a good summer. We're joined uh, this morning by the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce in West Pawtuck over in Kenya. His name is I am Seth. And we're going to talk about women's economic empowerment this morning. I am. How are you? I am well, thank you. You? I'm doing great. We're really happy you're on the program this morning. Thank you very much for the invite. We were talking a little bit about what's going on in Kenya. It's been a a rough year for everybody because of the COVID crisis. Why don't you kind of give us a little bit of background on what's going on economically there and how the COVID crisis has impacted you. And then we'll get in and talk about some of the work that you're doing with uh, women's empowerment uh, there in West Pawtuck. Ideally, the COVID pandemic has been such a a hit in Kenya, and uh, it has uh, really put people, especially the business community, it found us off guard, ideally, and uh, we were not prepared for anything of the sort. So it really has affected the economic um, status of uh, generally the business community. And uh, as a result, found ourselves as a Chamber of Commerce in a situation where we're trying to work with the government of the day to see the best way to make the business community survive in this pandemic. And uh, in the midst of all that, be able to help people to actually keep COVID at bay by the vaccinations and uh, social distance and the sanitization and all the ABCs of uh, making sure that uh, people keep healthy and try to hang in there in the business. But ideally, it is tough. It is tough, especially financially and people being able to access financial assistance to be able to come back on their feet has been very tough because also financial institutions are trying to really be cautious about who they lend to and who they don't lend to. And Ryan, the reason we're talking to IAM this morning is they want a newsletter contest, but it's more than just a newsletter. It's the work that they've been doing on the ground in support of women's empowerment in, in the economy in general and in, in helping entrepreneurs and businesses. Talk a little bit about the work from SIPE's point of view that I am and his organization has been doing. Sure. So first off, I should acknowledge that this podcast is, is a bunch of men talking about women's economic empowerment. <laughs> If, if the audience didn't figure that out, they figured it out now, right? <laughs> yeah. So we just, I want to, I want to apologize for, for this oversight. But nonetheless, they've been doing a great job in, uh, in support of women's issues. Exactly. So West Pocot Chamber, we, so first, uh, you know, a little bit about the competition. We have this newsletter that we send out to different chambers and associations across Africa that just highlights best practices and the great work that our their different partners are doing across the continent and and it's just a resource to 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 share with our network about you know how different chambers um are the the great work that they're doing and and be able to to spread ideas and and inspiration i mean so we put out a call for for all of our different partners to submit uh, basically like a like a little summary about the the work that they are doing around women's economic empowerment. Um, and we wanted to be able to highlight those, you know, who are really doing an exceptional job. And and the West Pocot Chamber was um, was one of those that um, that came in that, that we were really excited about. And they have been uh, over the past two years been doing a lot of work to both to highlight as well as support and and empower women business owners within within their county. Um, and and so it it started last year during during International Women's Day, which is in in March. So in 2020, just before the pandemic really hit, the the chamber had um, had a day in which they really just celebrated. The achievements of of business women within their county, and and they had opportunities for for training, and in, in which they could train business women in in access to finance and entrepreneurship skills. And then 
and then this this past March in, in 2021, um, they just really continued to expand on this. Um, they had a a, a Business Women's Awards Gala um, in which they were highlighting successful successful business women within the county, and and then they've just done a lot to to provide opportunity for business women. So, for example, you know, a, a common you see this all throughout all throughout Africa, but you know, you'll have these market market places where where people can come and set up their their goods and sell, whether it be produce or or clothing or, or whatever. And, and oftentimes in these marketplaces, there are, you know, specific stalls that, that the vendors can have. And, and in, in these, in these markets, a lot of women were basically cut out from being able to have stalls for themselves. And, and as a result, they were having to go out into the streets and sell their goods rather than having a devoted spot in, in the marketplace. And, you know, this, this, uh, this has a lot of implications. There's um, there's a lack of security. There's a lack of of place where you can store your goods overnight. So every day they had to pack up their stuff and take it home. I mean, so the West Bokai Chamber was doing a lot to to advocate for for women to have spots in these in these marketplaces. Um, another great great work that they've been doing is partnering with the Mastercard Foundation in in Kenya, which uh, which is providing loans to to small businesses all throughout the all throughout the country this is part of a a pandemic response that that mastercard is doing and west pocot has has been working with mastercard to bring in small businesses who you know who are who are good uh, candidates for for these small business loans and and in west pocot 90 percent of the businesses that they brought in who have received loans have been have been women, and so this has been a huge, an excellent opportunity for for women to to get greater access to finance, which is often a huge barrier that that women particularly face in Kenya and, and all throughout Africa is an access to, to to finance, and and so West Boca has has been doing a lot to to provide these opportunities for for business women to help them succeed and grow their business. I am. Where is West Pokot located uh, within Kenya? West Pokot is the western part of Kenya, bordering uh, Uganda, and uh, the lower part of it is uh, the Indian Ocean. So, ideally, West Pokot is in between the dry land part of Kenya and the productive side of Kenya. So, it is ideally sort of on the border of uh, Kenya and Uganda, that is where the county is. I don't know whether I've answered well. <laughs> Yet, no, it did. And it actually helps me with my next question. What are the economic drivers there? Is it mostly agriculture? You're close to the Indian Ocean. You know, do you have any tourism there? What are some of the economic drivers there? Our economic drivers are actually culturally driven. The drivers are livestock, especially livestock farming and a little bit of agriculture but mainly livestock farming. And uh, what are some of the major challenges facing women and women entrepreneurs in, in that part of the country? West Pocot, uh, the women have a major challenge that is driven by initially by the culture because women don't really have a position in the community in terms of uh, owning property or driving business. And as a result of that, the main challenge for women who want to go out and do business and make a living, they cannot be able to access financial um, help. Like they can't go to the banks to get anything because they don't have collateral, they don't have property. And so as a result of that, it becomes a very big challenge for any woman who wants uh, to make it in business. So the main challenge is finance because of the cultural setup. And uh, the next challenge also is women in West Pocot are given second place, if I would say it like that. So if it was an opportunity between a man and a woman, it will be given to a man first before the woman. So it becomes very difficult for those women who want to excel in whatever they do, in the passion they have, to move on to the next step, unless actually we come in as we're coming in to be able to actually assist them uh, move to the next step in business. Well, that leads me to my next question, and this is to both of you. What kind of progress has been made 
to help women kind of uh, face some of these hurdles that you just talked about, both in terms of advocacy with the government and also with the banking community in, in your own Chamber of Commerce? The first thing we did as Chamber of Commerce is to come up with a, a program for capacity building for women. In small trainings, as Ryan Marshall has mentioned, in uh, financial literacy and being able to actually empower them to be able to have the ABCs of doing businesses, especially the small scale level of businesses. We partnered with a number of friends and we came in with short programs to be able to train them and be able to actually build their confidence and their capacity in terms of doing business. Then we did this by organizing a, a, a workshop on it, the International Women's Day, which was first held in 2020, the first one. And uh, it really bore a lot of fruits. And as a result, when we saw that opportunity, we moved on to, and because we realized that this was an opportunity for us to actually engage the women. And as a result of them seeing what we're able to do for them, then use this particular opportunity to engage the county government to be able to know the potential that the women have in moving the economic status of the county to the next level. So that's how we set it off. Ryan, from our point of view, from Sipe's point of view, looking from the outside in, what kind of progress has, has Seth and his organization made there in really uh, furthering the goals of, of women and women business leaders? Well, I mean, I think that um, really the, the progress that they've made is, is just providing these, these opportunities for, for women. I mean, I think, that, I think that bringing these loans to business women is just a a hugely tangible accomplishment that that you know greatly affects the the ability of these women to to succeed as as business women is is just providing providing this this critical access to to finance that that almost any business needs in order to in order to be able to to grow they've been they've been a voice for been a voice for business women and and advocating you know specifically for the needs that the business women are are uniquely facing within West Polka. and and without the chamber, you know there there'd be a huge gap in terms of of the support that that these business women w- would be they would be missing without the chamber there. Ryan, you've you've worked in that part of the world for for quite a while now, and it, it, this doesn't sound like a real uh, urban area or populous area. I maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but how how do some of the the challenges they face differ from more populous uh, urban regions in Kenya? Yeah, I mean you're definitely correct. West Pokot uh, is um, is definitely is definitely a, a a much more rural area, and and with that is just a lack of. A lack of connections and, and a lack of of opportunities and and I think that's that's one of the things that the chamber has been able to do is is provide these networking opportunities for women. So you know these women are being in a very rural area. You don't get the the connections and the opportunity that you would if you were in Nairobi or in Mombasa. Um, and as anybody working in business knows, connections. And networks are, are critical in, in terms of support and finding new business opportunities, new partners, new suppliers, new um, new customers. And so the chamber, through providing these hosting hosting these these events for for women, provides a a valuable place for women to come together and be able to network with each other and build connections and support each other. That that otherwise would be lacking in in this very rural place where where it's hard to to bring people together and, and build those connections. Yeah, and, and you're right, Ryan. I mean, it, you know, living in rural areas and, and problems facing people in rural areas just are not unique to the developing world. We see it in the West, in the United States as well, because you have fewer opportunities, there's fewer people, and it, it's harder to connect. Uh, you're absolutely right about that. And we're gonna, I'm going to talk about a little different type of connection, which is technology. We've done podcast after podcast, Ryan, about the role of technology, especially in rural areas. And I want to ask I am, you know, h- how do you see technology playing a role where you live uh, in helping entrepreneurs and, and also women op- entrepreneurs? Technology is definitely the way to go uh, when you look at uh, any business moving to the next level and when you look entirely at where the world is going. But um, West Pocot, ideally, 
first of all, the way Ryan has explained it, being a rural area and uh, not being very exposed to the networks in the rest of the cities like Nairobi and Mombasa becomes a bit a hindrance and uh, lack of exposure to technology also makes it slower for us to move with the, the pace that the rest of the world is moving in terms of business. So as a result of that, we find ourselves in a situation where we may have to start with the basics of training women on the use of the technology before we even talk about the technology itself. So what about connectivity in the internet? How available is it in uh, West Pocot? I would say not very available. We are in a place called Kapenguria, where it is the town of the, the town of West Pocot. And ideally, that's where the place where you can actually get some connectivity. If you go outside the town, you can't get any connectivity. Like if you found me in the interior place, there's no as I was going to have this podcast. I could I have to move to Kapenguria to be able to do it. Right. And that's a hindrance. Because you're absolutely right that, you know, the technology is the wave of the future. We have found that since the pandemic started, that in many places of the world, it has forced people to embrace technology even more than they did before. And they've been very successful at it. But it's very difficult in places where you live, where, where you literally don't have that connectivity and internet access. Is the chamber working with uh, with the local government, with the national government, with uh, technology suppliers, internet companies to make improvements in that area? Yes, indeed. The chamber is actually uh, working with the county government, which in turn is working with the national government to be able to harness the idea of internet. Uh, So we are really still on the basics of uh, actually laying down the cables to come up to the county before we can move to the next level of now connectivity. So the process is ongoing right now. And we hope maybe in in the next one or two years, we will have more connectivity than we actually are experiencing right now. Ryan, what's SIPE doing to help in this area? Well, my colleague Hannah right. in the Africa Department is is working on a program in, in Kenya that, that's focused on on improving the digital economy and and looking at you know bring bring together bring together stakeholders within Kenya that uh, that have an interest in the digital economy and and creating a creating a, a collective voice to, to advocate on on policy issues that would improve the the overall business environment for the digital economy and so that that's everything from from infrastructure to knowledge and and education and, and human resources to to policies on taxes and and internet availability and um, and an open and free internet and and so so we're working on on strengthening the collective voice of of the business community all across Kenya to be engaging government and and advocating to to improve the the whole business environment that would enable a digital economy to to continue to grow and thrive in in Kenya which which Kenya is in the continent, you know, one of the oftentimes seen as one of the leaders in terms of, of digital economy. Right. Um, but there's also still a, a ton of, of, of work to be done to continue to to grow and uh, and enable that that sector to, to thrive in, in Kenya. Yeah. And in fact, uh, that digital divide is a major problem throughout the, the entire world. And it's, it's just something that comes up a lot on this program, uh, Ryan. And it's, uh, it's a huge part of the future of, of any economy. I want to ask you, you know, where, where you see West Pocot in the next five years? Uh, are you an optimist? Are you a pessimist? What do you see happening? I am an uh, optimist by all means, because uh, for me to have taken on the journey to work especially with the lists uh, attended to a group of uh, people who are the women in West Pocot meant that I am such an optimist because it's um, looking at uh, most people would like to identify themselves with the, the winning team, but I took on the, the program of women because I realized the potential that they had, but nobody was looking their side. So where I see West Pocot in the next five years, I see a chamber of West Pocot that will change the whole county and uh, empower the business community to a level where we, we can become an economic powerhouse in terms of uh, a county level and where we will be a go-to place when it comes to uh, business opportunities and uh, business transactions, a go-to place when it comes to benchmarking 
a good place when it comes to actually learning experiences in terms of people who have challenged situations and become better as a result of uh, being optimistic in what they do. So in the next five years, I see West Pocot becoming a, a business economic powerhouse. That sounds great. Ryan, I'm going to leave the last question with you. I'm curious, and this is this is just in a different direction, and, and maybe it's not a good closing question, but, but I'm curious, uh, you know, you mentioned that you are on the border of Uganda, and another issue that we are, are facing a lot in Africa in the future, right now and, and in the future, is is increased trade across borders and and we're working on on the AFCFTA as as the continent looks to become more of a unified economic bloc. How do you see the the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement affecting um, the future of, of West Pocot? The effect will definitely be, be positive because uh, we are already um, having uh, committees being formed across the border to foster peace and to be able to actually integrate the two business communities to be able to understand that they can actually be able to gain from each other by understanding each community, how we can be able to harness the businesses that we have across the border to be able to work together. So as a result of that, both governments have come up with uh, strategies to be able to form committees that will be able to actually harmonize the whole situation, so that at the end of the day, the Africa free trade area will become a a big plus to West Pokot and uh, uh, bordering Uganda and, uh, of course, uh, bringing in uh, uh, better results. Great. Well, along with the digital economy, the the Africa Free Trade Agreement is is something that that we at SIPE are are going to be working on a lot lot more in, in the years to come. That sounds great. So I am, thanks so much for being with us. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, Ryan, once again, thanks. And I'm sure you'll be back on in the, in the near future and uh, hope to see you in the office uh, in the near future. But we'll see everybody next time. Take care. Democracy That Delivers has been brought to you by the Center for International Private Enterprise. For more information, please visit sipe.org.